Today's show is brought to you by Milwaukee-based Spite Brewing, designer and manufacturer of premium quality home brewing equipment. Is your beer falling flat? Are you sick of setting up all that gear for a brew day and running out to buy propane? Frustrated by the weather dictating your brewing schedule? Take it inside and avoid the cold, wet winter with the turnkey electric system from Spite Brewing. Trusted by home brewers and pros alike, the Spite system will change the way you brew and take your beer to new heights. And whether you're interested in a simple upgrade from a glass carboy to a stainless steel fermenter, or you're switching from propane to electric, Spite Brewing has the solution for you. Reach out today to spitebrewing.com forward slash homebrew happy hour, and their team can help you figure out what you need to make the most of your brew day. Spite Brewing. Pursue what's possible. Entertaining, Entertaining shows with content that spreads information and sparks discourse throughout the community. This is the Pearl Media Network. And welcome to the Homebrew Happy Hour. This is the show where we supply the answers to your homebrewing questions and discuss all things related to craft beer. If you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, you can go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submitted question link at the top of the page. Or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107. I am your host, Joshua Steubing. Today I am joined by the Director of Operations at cmbecker.com, Mr. James Carlson. And Todd, uh, he was going to be on this week's episode. He is uh, with his pop. They had to uh, go to Abilene. And uh, his dad, he forgot his dad had a, or not forgot, it was like a last minute stress test. Isn't that what was going on? That's it. He was having some uh, pain. Yeah. And uh, of course, you know, Todd's uncle's a doctor, uh, Pierce's brother, and said, hey, let's get this guy over and have him take a stress test just to be safe. Exactly. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. And I I think everything went well because I've talked to Todd and his dad since they, they call me when they're, they're on their way back right now from Abilene. And uh, it seemed like it went well. I was going to ask him if at that age, because I did a stress test once in my early 20s. Really? I, di- I did only because they, wow. I um, when I was in my early 20s, I, I wasn't like a hypochondriac, but I was having these weird chest, like um, palpitation type stuff. And, oh, okay. and so the doc just, I uh, guess to be thorough, you know, put me on the treadmill or whatever and, and hooked me up and did all this. I mean, I had to go to Austin Heart Doctors is the name of it. It was off of Westgate back at the time or in that area. But anyway, I remember running and being like, well, first off, oh my God, I'm out of shape right now. This is terrible. But I was wondering. <laughs> that would be me totally. Yeah, if you're in your 80s, because he, what is Pierce? He's like 84? 84, 85. Yeah, he's in his mid 80s. Yeah. Do they still put you on a treadmill in your mid 80s for a stress? He's a hoss, too. He would do he it. He could outwork me, I, oh, I think. That's what I was going to say is he, if they put him on, what what I would, was going to ask him is, what's his mile time? Because I bet you it's better than mine. And he's in his mid 80s. <laughs> probably like, so. He probably was well, like, well, it did, if you, do you need me to <laughs> sprint harder, everybody? Like his, Todd's dad is the biggest badass, like, he is. ever. He, he, he's a hardcore dude, man. When they were putting up that tower um, a couple weeks ago when I was up there last, and they were putting up that, uh, would you, not a microwave tower. What would you, is that a microwave tower? I don't know what you Well, call. it's just uh, we, we got a couple of long-distance routers or wireless access points, but we're using them as a bridge. And, uh, man, it's eating my lunch. I can't get the thing <laughs> configured right. Well, the, but they put up like that. It's not a satellite. They're calling it a banjo because of the way it's shaped and it looks to receive yeah. the signal. So Todd's broadcasting it from his part over to his pop's yeah. property, which is kind of down the hill. Mm-hmm. And, it's and a mile. It's directly a mile as the crow flies. It is. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, yeah, you could barely see the tower from where they were putting it up. So we're on t- on Pierce's property and they're putting it up. I was watching. We, but we know that that goes unsaid. <laughs> but but Pierce was like he was all he was working hard. And I was like, can we help you? Like it was me and, and Kenny who was there at the time. And like, oh, I think <laughs> I think we've got it. If, if you want to go in the house and get some dessert or, you know, and, and I don't turn down dessert. So, like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> but no, he's doing well. But Todd just couldn't join us. And we're doing this. Um, it's been a crazy busy week in, in our has. realm. Uh, orders are are just going crazy, like recipe orders. I was talking to Joe, and it's like every, every other second, it seems like a new recipe order is coming through on Homebrew Supply. It's like Supply. Black Friday. 
it is like Black Friday. I think people, um, obviously, it's directly correlated to this whole COVID-19 mm. uh, situation. First, we hope you're doing good through all this, yep. guys. We hope you're staying healthy. We hope that if you are furloughed or temporarily out of work, that that ends quick or that you're having some help. Yes, absolutely. We, we know a lot of home brewers uh, are affected in their personal lives. And we know personally a lot of brewers at the professional level who are getting affected right now. So if you yeah. are... If you're who, who knew? I mean, honestly, yeah. everybody was laughing this stuff up in January and fam- February, but I had no idea it would be where it is right now. Yeah, we, yeah, no, no Crazy. idea. And and I, my area, I live in a suburb of Austin. They, they just put in a shelter in place order. Um, I wow. I'm don't think I'm considered essential. I made a fake badge in case I do want to drive around and I get pulled <laughs> over, but um, I don't think I'm considered essential. So we've been sticking around the house, but restaurants are open. And to my knowledge, in They're my open, really? Well, 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 no, no, pardon me. For takeout, takeout okay, only. Okay. <laughs> yeah, takeout like, and wow. delivery. You the, all the dine in Kyle Texas, all the eat in options were shut down a week ago or a little yeah, bit more. Comanche and De Leon. De Leon has like 2500 people and it's it has one walk-in restaurant and it's closed to the public. Are they do they at least let you order and pick up or do they just shut down completely? You no, know, they've got they've got a pickup. Okay. Well, so. that well good because like I said I uh we have a lot of local mom and pop shops that are desperately needing people to still patron them and mm-hmm. not that they want people just walking around ramping up you know their activities outside their home right now but if you have the option to maybe order in uh delivery or or have the ability to go pick up takeout it's a good time to support your local mom and pop shops and local homebrew supply shops too unfortunately sure. i think i think most of them i had a buddy uh, uh pardon me had a listener reach out and asking about uh if how this was affecting homebrew supply and cat connection. And I told them as of right now, business as usual, Todd, we have a whole um, at catconnection.com or on their Facebook page. There is a whole list of what Todd has implemented there for y'all uh, mm-hmm. keeping six feet away. People are all wearing N95 respirator mask, uh, yeah. practicing good hygiene. The, the, you know, Todd, I guess you rather, I think led the uh, hygiene uh, instructional to, to people, and yeah. everyone's practicing good practices, but as long as Comanche County doesn't shut y'all down, my understanding is it's business as usual. But I've been yeah. hearing this guy wrote in and he wrote, he said, well, my local homebrew supply shop got shut down and they've decided to, you know, that this was just the last, they just couldn't, they didn't think they could survive it. So they went ahead and said they're closing for good anyway. Oh, like that. I hate that. I hate yeah. that. And that I was telling, yeah. so, you know, this isn't a popular thing to say, but the boss isn't around so I can say it. If you can support your local mom and pop, do it, guys. Um, yeah. We re- appreciate, obviously, all the recipes you've been ordering, all the cat kits you've been ordering. If you can get stuff from your local mom and pop, just um, it please do. Please yeah. do. It won't hurt our feelings, and they might not be around when all the dust clears, and which we don't mm-hmm. know when it's going to be, unfortunately. we. No. Nope. By we, I don't just mean James and I. I mean, I, you all send me a link to say when this objectively may end, and uh, yeah. we just don't know. And for better or for worse, we just don't know. So if you can support, please do. And if y'all need anything, Todd was not joking last week when we talked about it. Uh, let us know if you need something, if there's something we can do for your club. If you need training on how to broadcast meetings, uh, you know, the collective knowledge between James, myself and Todd, we can we can maybe help you. Or worst case, I'll try to entertain you. I'll juggle. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's just it's like I said before, nobody, nobody had a clue it was going to come to this. Nobody. I certainly didn't. No, me, me neither. And now I'm out of toilet paper. So, <laughs> But anyway, y'all are listening to the Homebrew Happy Hour. We're happy to have you. We are a Q&A show. If you're new to this, we have some small talk before we get into the questions, though, talking about the websites and the deals. Todd, I had left this small talk thing in there because he was like, oh, talk about the deals. But I guess it's up to me now. Uh, at CatConnection.com, you can get 15% off all Cat Kit deals right now and brewing equipment deals such as the Cooler Brew, which is what me and my dad use when we do all grain brewing. It's for only 250 $58, it, and it comes with the CM Becker cleaning and sanitizing kit. The Cooler Brew, guys, honestly, is probably the easiest way to do all-grain brewing. It is. If, yep. you, if you don't want to spend money on a three-tier system, right? Like That's <laughs> right. Yeah, it's it's old school, but it works very well. We did a video on it. It's had pretty good response. I think we're 
what 50,000 views now? Up up there. It's at, I think we're right above it now. Yeah, people um people who do that kind of brewing because that is ever since I've been working for Todd, been in the industry, that has been the tried and true way of brewing your beer, right? Like uh it may not be the Idloo style coolers. It may have been more like the Coleman style like, you know, rectangle coolers, but people yeah. have been using coolers to brew for a while. And because it works and the cooler brew, I've been very impressed with how it holds temperature. Uh, how it's easy to hit your numbers on our alt beer, which if people watched that episode a couple weeks ago of recipe recap, my dad and I had some hiccups, but that was user error because we, uh, the, we didn't seal the mash tun, uh, all the way we, there was some temperature fluctuation from when we started to when we started, uh, the sparge was about to happen. And, but mm-hmm. if you, if you do things how they're supposed to be done. The cooler brew for my money is probably the best thing I've ever bought for uh, for my dad and I. And again, it's what we've been using for all grain brewing. But uh, yes, a lot of stuff on sale right now at kegconnection.com. No promo code needed. Just go there, look at the deals. Might Right now might be a good time to get into kegging. Might be a good time into building out your keys or if you're already home already. If you're one of those yep. in- essential employees, uh, <laughs> then, then maybe still take advantage of the deals. I don't know when they're ending. Todd seemed pretty open to the idea of trying to give as much deals to people as possible to make this mm-hmm. situation a little bit easier, uh, especially if you have the time. You know, I Idle, what is the saying? Like idle hands, something, something. Idle hands aren't good. <laughs> I, if you're, you can, I, we don't want people going stir crazy cabin fever when they're at home. Uh, yeah. You know, I joked last week, like uh, about how my kids are, or, you know, oh, blah, 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 blah. Look, I love my family, but I can still, I work in a converted garage with no windows. <laughs> it's good to get out every now and then, which, Next segue to net small talk. My dad and I brewed a Kolsch I yesterday. Oh yeah. man, uh, the the best way you know the only one of the best things to come out of this is uh, that I was able to spend a, a Wednesday brewing with my dad and and and, and uh, smoking chicken and smoking uh, ribs. It was cool. a it was a great day, and we got we got some good footage of it. We were uh, it was an extract recipe, but. Uh, we just needed a quick brew day, and our my dad's keg rater is getting low. I hadn't had a Kolsch. The stores around this area are now completely out of fruit. I don't know who bought them out, but it's hard to find a good Kolsch because somebody yeah. bought them out. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to make sure we had Kolsch on hand because I don't know how far this whole thing's going. If uh, Yeah, hopefully if, not because yes. Sam Becker, all our products come out of our factory in Dusseldorf. and. Mm. I know, Getting dude. Freight from Europe has been difficult, and I know all it, of our customers are restaurant-based industry, and yeah, it's not. It's not pretty right now. We need it's not yeah. booming right now for Sam Becker. I'll tell you that. Yeah, we yeah we definitely would love for a resolution to happen, which I guess is a good time to implement that. Hey, if your local entity tells you that it's nice to just stay home and not go out if you don't need to, yeah, probably nice to just stay home and not go out if you don't need to, but. You know, you do you guys. But uh, our Patreon stuff that I wanted to mention before we get into the questions, our giveaway for March is about to happen. It's for a V3N Stout Faucet from CM Becker International. That giveaway will be on the last day of March, which I don't know if there's 30 or 31 days of March. I have to do the January, February. 31, okay, 31. Yeah, my, my middle knuckle told me what doing the trick. <laughs> um, so we'll announce that to members of our Patreon. I'll make a post there. Um, also, if you're joining our Patreon at the top two tiers, you get a recipe every month or every other month. That is still coming out with our premium liquid yeast from our friends up in Portland, Imperial Yeast. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, Owen, for your partnership with us. It has been the most well-received thing we've ever done, James, is including really? an, an Imperial. Oh, of all of all the things we've ever done. And th- when we had, wonder why, maybe because they have a fantastic product. I don't know. I thought it was because of me, but you're. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people people have. I, I told you about the guy who's joined and basically implied like I don't even listen to your show. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hey man, I don't. I don't. I don't He's I don't, honest. Yeah, I, I don't blame you. I don't. I don't listen to it when I'm not editing it, but. Yeah, uh, jo- go to patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour. Any tier we greatly appreciate. We have had some uh, sponsors reach out right now in this uncertain time. Uh, understandably, we've had people had to drop off our Patreon at different levels or adjust their Patreon level. And we've yeah. had some sponsors who were coming up that have canceled. And and unfortunately for next month, Spike is 
kind of keeping to their guard and they're they're just trying to get through it like everybody else is because we just don't know what's going to happen no hard feelings ever and especially if you're a patreon member that is tuning in and you decide what's best for your personal financial situation guys please i'm not gonna kick you out of the facebook group uh i'm not gonna stop i'm not gonna stop replying to your instagram posts or comments guys we love y'all and we totally understand and we're going through it with y'all so don't ever feel the need to explain yourself to us but Anyway, so yes. Uh, oh, I can announce for April, the recipe is Happy Little Hops. It's a session IPA from Homebrew Supply. Uh, that's the other recipe I brought home that I'm going to record and do a live brew day here, cool. in about, here in about a week. So uh, a lot of fun stuff still going on. We're still making content, for better or for worse. So you can always still come to our uh, homebrewhappyhour.com, get all the articles we publish, get the episodes of Recipe Recap, which we're figuring out the logistics of how we can continue that show. And, um, but yes, just in short, we're still producing stuff, whether you like it or not, but thank you for tuning in. So anyways, Mr. Carlson, I do have two questions for today's show. Uh, the first one, I, it was brought to my attention that I haven't been putting voicemail episodes, uh, or voicemail questions in the shows lately. And I go, Oh my God, I forgot to check the voicemail. We have a lot of voicemails. So I've took one for this show. I'm going to try to make it more regular to catch up and help these people who were so nice to contribute questions this way. And also they've been waiting for their $25 gift cards if I take it. So the first one, <laughs> yeah. the first one came from Rudy. He used uh, our call-in hotline at 325-305-6107. And Rudy said... you present the information. I'm kind of an intermediate brewer looking to move to more advanced methods and better consistency. Recently had my all-in-one system die on me, but with some rewiring, I was able to bring it back to life. That introduced me to the idea of PID controllers and solid-state relays and got me thinking about building my own 10-gallon system. Here's my question. What are the benefits and drawbacks of a single-vessel rim system like a large all-in-one versus a three-vessel Herm system. I can do either using equipment I have on hand, Kegel, 15-gallon pot, old all-in-one, to immersion coils, grain basket, etc. I'd be using either a 5,500-watt element for the all-in-one or a combination of 1,500, 2,000, and 5,500-watt for the three-vessel system. Space isn't an issue, but I do like the idea of only having to clean one pot. I'm willing to clean all three, though, if there are benefits to a three-vessel system over a single vessel. Let me know what you think and keep up the great work, guys. Much appreciate. Best wishes. That's a good question. It, it is, and that's why yeah. I included it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would – you know me. I prefer a three-vessel Herm system. The, for the, One of the main reasons why I like a Herms is you can't scorch the wart on the element. And uh, we we ran into that the other day on a single system. And I mean, I just, we had a circulation issue and that element just looked like a, a lump of black coal. And, you know, if you have constant circulation with a single system and, and you don't have a stuck sparge, I mean, sparge, a stuck mash, then you're not going to have an issue with it. But I just don't like the fact that uh, there's a hot element in sugar water. Just just don't like that at all. So I prefer a three vessel with a harm's coal. The cool thing about a harm's coal is you will never burn or scorch the wart ever. That's big, man. Yeah, it's huge. And uh, we all know what scorched wart beer tastes like. <laughs> tastes like crap. <laughs> so the benefits on a single system, you don't have as much stuff. You don't have as much electronics. You, you know, a lot of times you can run the same element, the, the same solid state relay, in one PID. So it's a lot more simple. There's a lot less equipment to clean, but man, a three, three vessel system, which, you know, you really only clean in two pots. If you think about it, the Herms coal is just hot water. So there's really nothing in there to clean. In fact, I use what's left in the Herms coal to circulate through the pumps and, and the coil and all of that. So a lot of that water goes to use as a cleaning agent for the other two. So all day long, three vessel system. Yeah, you got to have, you know, three different. I use three. I built a three vessel system for Todd, and I use three PIDs, two SSRs, 
you know, you have to have some switches and some lights and all that. But I kind of like that stuff. It was fun to build. It looks really cool, and, too. <laughs> yeah, you, you, exactly. When people walk in, it's pretty. If you don't have a, a, a space issue and you don't mind washing three, I would tell you. Rudy, get, go for a three vessel system. I think you'll like it. When even the cleaning, James, I would argue too. It's uh, it's pretty straightforward on the three, right? Like, I mean, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, I've just... cleaned before on brew days where uh, you know when when I don't help out at all, Todd makes a point to point that out, and then at the end say, "Okay, you're on janitorial." And I've done the three vessel before up at headquarters. Yeah, and uh, and I've cleaned that new spike one, and you know, cleaning's cleaning. I mean, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, I knew you, what I do is I just, when the mash is done and I just finished my sparge, I'll start cleaning the mash ton out and while I'm waiting for it to get to boil. And then at the end of the brew day, the only thing I have left to clean is the brew, is the boil pot. That's it. So it, to me, the benefits far outweigh, you know, the anything a single system, for me, my personal opinion any benefit a single system has, I just I would rather use a Herms. Now you can do a rims three vessel rims, but you still have a hot element running through. A lot of times in a rim system, they'll put an element in a pipe, and then they'll run the wart through that pipe, and it'll it'll heat the wart as it's going through circulation. Uh, but I still don't like the idea of a hot element in sugar water. And would your opinion change if you knew the volume he would be brewing? Like, like if he, I mean, he's talking about a 15 gallon pot. So I'm assuming yeah. there should be 10 gallon batches. Sure. Would, would yeah. you still recommend, uh, like if someone said, Hey, I'm, I'm committed to only doing five gallon batches. Would you say yeah. I should get that, that seven gallon spike three tier or three vessel, pardon me, or should I get a grain father? Like, would your opinion change in, in regards to smaller volume? Uh, uh, it's smaller volume, you could go with an all-in-one like a grandfather or a mash and boil. But I mean, I guess you can. I brewed with that grandfather here in our brew room for two two years consistently. And uh, but there were uh, there were a couple of times, probably more than two, that I had a problem with circulation and the wart scorched. I remember. So uh, it's just not something that I care to experience again. And, and let's let's be honest. Brewing equipment and brewing, more, more importantly, brewing uh, ingredients—they're not cheap. And I hate doing all that work to have something come out that isn't drinkable. I have it's noticed total waste of since y'all got the spite system and then the 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 one that you built at Todd's. I've noticed one y'all now y'all brew a lot more. <laughs> yeah. And the beer is consistently exceptional. And I and it is. And you brewed very good beer on the grandfather, don't get me wrong, but man, are y'all brewing really good it's beer. It's totally I mean, and grandfather, absolutely, you can brew I think one of the best alt beers, well, not the blonde alt, I think is probably the best alt I've ever done. But one of the better alt beers that I brewed, I brewed on Grandfather. And if you remember, that was the one that we was the first time we took beer yep. to uh Humbercon. And it was a big hit. In Minnesota, so, I remember. Yeah, I remember because yeah. that one judge who did the category drinkers got his buddy and circled right back and got some more. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that was the best. Yeah. You were like, you're like, did he just circle back? <laughs> he did. He brought all his other judge friends to to try it out. So it was a really cool. So you can do you can do good beer on in any system. It's what I prefer is the three vessel. I would go bigger if you're thinking about doing seven gallon or less than 10 gallon batches I would be, it's not going to be much more money to go higher because nothing worse than running out of homebrew so that's it's terrible i it's agree terrible having what? to go buy beer oh i know i i I, <laughs> bu- I ended up getting a fridge in my office uh, delivered a week ago uh mm-hmm. for my kombucha i was getting tired my wife pardon me was getting tired of it taking up space in our main fridge and so yeah. i was like all right so i got basically a non-towered kegerator type of fridge and uh now i'm like okay i'm gonna have to convert this one day because all that's sitting in there is kombucha and a half a gallon of milk that wouldn't fit in our fridge so <laughs> but yeah it, it is a, like we went to my i went to my dad's the brew yesterday breakfast out phenomenal 
We, there's yeah. a there's a tiny tiny little bit of it left. There's a tiny little bit of the pale ale we brewed a, a month or two months ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the alt has you know at least four gallons left in it. But the northern English brown ale, which do you remember when we brewed that? It was a long time mm, ago. That was one that you and Joe and Todd did. It was a while. That was like October yeah. maybe. Uh, October. But it, dude, it turned, and I don't know what it what happened, but it has that buttery diacetyl. Uh, type of taste in it now and my dad was trying to figure out what what happened i said i, I don't i really don't know uh mm. but we we dumped it because it was i thought i was like oh well, when's the last time you poured some maybe we you know when's the last time you cleaned the lines no 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 we poured a bunch it was distressing and there's a, it's, <laughs> it's spit in the corner that's left too so who knows uh yeah. you know i asked him if maybe he had a power outage and a temperature fluctuation at some point throughout that time and that's what yeah. did it who knows but the other beers well you know fine. we had that that uh what was that? That Pilsner, that lemon drop Pilsner. Oh, that's right. Last year, it, we had one. If you remember, it set. This was in the summertime, and it set in a warehouse, a FedEx warehouse, for three days. And we had one that was fine. So, it, it, just a little bit of diacetyl in there can grow real quick and heat. And we had one that was not drinkable. One keg that was delicious, and the other keg was infected and i'm glad we had by maybe dumb luck tapped the delicious one first Mm -hmm. that we were able to serve and go through because it was incredible and it was a huge hit and that was one of the first kids we went through and so the next day when we hooked up the next one and and then i think it was actually michael ferguson remember it Mm -hmm. was before the floor opened michael ferguson and one of his buddies came over and was like i'd like to try that one i poured it (laughs) i poured it for him he goes and he, he whispered because he's such a gentleman. No, mind you, the show floor is closed. Nobody's around. He's still <laughs> yeah. a gentleman. He comes up to me and whispers, you may want to check that keg. And uh, I was like, James, can you check the keg? <laughs> and, and sure enough, we, we pour some. You're like, you're like, son of a bitch. And here goes James carrying a five-gallon keg to the bathroom yep. where the poor soul that didn't see him carry it in but walked in after thought you had the most massive diarrhea <laughs> or or had, or had the longest piss of all time because you're pouring. <laughs> yep, that, there's one guy. He just shook his head like, that's a damn shame. <laughs> we Because we all know that's the best part of homebrew con is the camaraderie seeing someone pour out a whole keg like oh no what happened diacetyl yeah, especially being a logger you know we, we there's a lot more care taken well i wouldn't say care but you have to monitor temperatures a little more and uh, there's a little more work involved in a logger and i hate to throw five gallons down the toilet yeah which reminds me i might use this time to just buy the cf-15 for my dad and i because the first concern he had was, what do we have to ferment at? Oh, man, that's going to be hard right now with the temperatures and, and yeah. cranking up the AC. And I was like, okay, well, I'm buying it. I'm just going to call. Uh, where, where you find a spot. I'm just going to buy it. Uh, we'll get the glycol set up. We'll just drop the money once. Because then it's never an issue. It's, yeah. Then temperature's never an issue if you have the, the proper setup. So Just go to Walmart, get one of those cheap window units, put it in that closet. I've been you saying know? that, man. I've been yeah. saying that. I've been we even have the temperature controllers here. We got a whole case of temperature controllers that don't have pigtails on them. We can put a pigtail on it, hook it up, you're done. Boom. See, James knows what's going on, Dad. And I know you're listening. Let's just <laughs> yeah. let's just do it. You're our only listener. Uh, anyways, <laughs> but thank you, Rudy, so much for submitting your question. And again, guys, if y'all do want to leave a voicemail, uh, you can call in at 325-305-6107. You'll hear my beautiful voice instructing you on what to do. And if we take it on air, we give you a $25 gift card. So, Rudy, check your inbox. You've got a $25 gift card to KetConnection.com. Thank you, Mr. Todd Burns. Okay. Oh, our- yeah. And, and I will say this, Rudy, if you've got any questions or anything, just email me. You go to cmbecker.com at the bottom of the page, the, the main page, you'll see my contact information. Be happy to help in any way I can. James and Todd live for this kind of stuff, like the building outs of kegerators and keezers or your brew system. He legitimately lives for it. So if you if you have questions, please take him up on that. So Yeah. All right. The second question came from Mike L., who used the submission form at homebrewhappyhour.com. Mike wrote in, hello, I found your podcast a few weeks ago and have greatly enjoyed listening to old and new episodes. 
In the weeks I have been listening, your knowledge and insight have inspired me to pursue excellence in my brewing efforts with phenomenal results so far. That is a great compliment. And well, <laughs> yeah. and he's well-spoken. Um, I have been homebrewing since 1996, first using full wow. extract. I know. First using full extract, then partial grain, then finally moving to all grain a few years ago. Although I've generally made pretty good beer over these years, it has been wildly inconsistent, even between batches of the same recipe. Between extensive use of software such as Brewfather, careful attention to hitting mash temps, and my new spike conical with temperature control, I have recently been striving for more predictable results and consistency between batches. My questions have to do with brew house and mash efficiency. By default, Brewfather assumes a 72% a 72 brew house efficiency and a 75.1% mash efficiency. Using those assumptions, I have been overshooting my expected ABV by 1% to 2%. This indicates to me that my actual efficiency is better than the assumption. So my questions are, am I correct that a higher than expected ABV indicates the efficiency assumptions are too low? What is the difference between brew house efficiency and mash efficiency? And how do I calculate what my actual efficiencies are? I recently bumped them up to 75% and 80.3% in the software to see if that gets me closer to my expected ABV, but it's just a guess that may or may not help me achieve the results I am after. Keep up the good work. Your show provides a valuable resource to both new and more experienced homebrewers. As someone who started with very little resources or information was available, I can truly agree with Joshua that it is, in fact, a great time to be alive. Thank you. I, I know it was long, but I love that kind of feedback, and I love yeah. that kind of questions. And and it is it's good to take an intermediate question or two right now, yeah. uh, especially with people who are home and maybe actually listening to our shows now uh, <laughs> or experienced brewers. But I, if it, I only know efficiencies from what is on the recipes that you give yeah. me. So what are your, what is your input, Mr. Carlson? Well, I mean, I probably should be asking him questions. He's been brewing <laughs> since 96. He's got me beat by 10 years um, or so. No, really, I think the biggest difference between the mash efficiency and the brew house efficiency is Here's this is the way I look at it is is if I'm talking mash efficient, efficiency that's what I get in the mash process barring the equipment you know when I put mm -hmm. a kit together I'm looking more at it's hard to explain in the actual mash itself with the recipe and the grains that I use at the temperature and and all of that I can I, I have a certain number here, and it's usually always higher than the uh, brew house efficiency. The way I look at it is brew house efficiency is more real world, hands on your equipment, what you end up with. So I'm always tweaking my calculators. I use the uh, um, called Brewer's Friend. Brewer's card. Friend. I, I, I was going to interrupt you, but you were on a good thought. <laughs> Brewer's Friend. Yeah, yeah um, I've got too many things in my head right now, but I use Brewer's Friend. And when I do a particular recipe over again, I will, I, I'll take notes and you can actually in there, when you start the, the, when you brew the recipe, you can make notes and you can, and you can always tweak that because I'm, I want to know a good example is the last time that we brewed on Todd's system, our efficiency was way low. And that concerns me because we've been fairly consistently above 80% uh, brew house efficiency with a spike system. Pretty good. So we, what that does is that, that lightens your grain load, your, your recipe, your kit cost um, on a given batch. But this last one, it went way low. I mean, I would say it was below 70% because I had to boil off two gallons to hit gravity. So, you know, that's another rabbit hole, but <laughs> your equipment, you know, your equipment, if you brew enough on it, you know what you're going to end up getting efficiency out of it. Um, and that's the easiest, quickest way to, to explain the difference between mash efficiency and brew house efficiency. You know, on paper and in your calculator, what, what your mash efficiency should be. But then after you brew it, you sparge and you boil and you have trub losses and all of that, you, you're going to have your brew house efficiency. And those numbers, typically brew house is always a, a few points below the mash efficiency. But there's a lot of things that you can, that can affect that as well, too. Uh, one big thing, because we use temperature controllers and PIDs, if you don't calibrate those, 
Uh, we did one one time where the temperature was off like six degrees. And you know how a stickler taught is for temperature. I mean, if six, deg six degrees could be, if you're wanting to mash at 152 and you're six off, you're in the beta range. You're not even doing alpha. Alpha, if, if we remember, that's the long sugar chains that aren't completely fermentable that creates body and a little residual sweetness. But the beta, that's in the lower temperature range. Those are the little small sugar uh, that the enzymes, the beta gets all eaten up. So if you want to dry beer, you want to have more, but you don't create as much sugars in the beta as you do in the alpha. So we want to try to capture both of those as quick as possible. And that's at the 150 range, a quick, an hour. You know, sometimes I've had to mash longer. I'm trailing off. But <laughs> there's, um, to me, I, I just, I, once you brew in your system long enough, you know what to expect in efficiency. And you can tweak that in your recipe calculator, which is what I do. I'm not completely ate up by efficiency. You know, a lot of people, it's a big concern. It's not for me. If I'm within a few points, that's fine. I can either boil, I can add water or boil down to hit gravity and then tweak the recipe the next time I do it to see if it, if it, uh, if it helps. Also, grain milling can affect efficiency as well, too. Uh, don't go too fine, though, as we found out, because it'll, it'll, you'll have a stuck mash and then you burn elements. I am always impressed by your ingenuity on a brew day. Like even on on th all the mishaps we had working on that prototype with the uh, the single vessel from Spite, you mm -hmm. were like, "Okay, here's what we'll do." And then the next hurdle came, and you're like, "Okay, here's what we'll do." Like <laughs> yeah, boil, boil go, down, damn, MacGyver but, your yeah. way out of it. <laughs> but you did. It, it, it's impressive. I um, you know, especially after that recipe recap episode we did on the alt beer, I was like, I was I was writing mental notes and then wrote some notes on my phone. I used the OneNote app from Microsoft about like, oh, okay, well if this happens, then then do this or or take yeah. or take gravity here, and here's why it's important. And that's one of my favorite things about brewing is figuring all this stuff out and then also determining what's worth my worries and effort. Like you said, um, are you losing sleep if your numbers, if your efficiency numbers aren't spot on? Is that something that makes you lose sleep at night? No, <laughs> I <laughs> really don't. You know, I just, I just, I just make changes in the in the efficiency on that recipe during that that brew session. But um, it really just brew house efficiency is what you end up throughout the whole brewing process with your equipment, and, and that that includes losses during the boil. Uh, what you do with the sparge, you know, trub loss, and, you know, all that stuff. And, and you, as a person who makes recipes, and most companies that are making recipes, like Lorena when, for Homebrew Supply mm -hmm. or all the other retail options available, it's pretty safe to try. Like, they, it's a generalized calculation for those recipes. So, like, people who are listening – and are, yeah. are, are like, man, I do extract. Should I be worried about this? You're probably fine, guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. Extract, you, you don't have anything to worry about. But when I'm doing an all-grain recipe, I usually shoot for about 75% mash efficiency. You know, and that's going to be, most people are going to be able to do that or more. So that's kind of you usually where I, I, I hit. That's how I calculate the, my uh, starting gravity on the kit is... 75% efficiency. And that's, that's what I plug into the calculator. Right. I was going to say, yeah. And you're you, and that's the, the good thing. Again, reiterating that last point that, uh, Mike wrote that I, that I agree with that. It's such a great time to be alive because when you're making the recipe, you're not pulling it from your butt. You're like, you have the calculator yeah. there. You have the BJCP, uh, yep. Guideline, the right guideline there. Out. You have yeah. all that stuff. Like I've seen you, your notes for recipes. It is like that scene from uh, "It's Always Sunny" where Charlie is showing the map <laughs> with the different stuff. Like, <laughs> but <laughs> only, I don't know about that. I know, but, but I'm just. I mean, it's just the the amount of detail that goes in. It's not just you googling uh, Kolsch. Copying people. Yeah, yeah, recipes. It's, it's impressive. But yeah, that's why, again, maybe for better or for worse, I have not put a lot of thought into efficiency numbers, even on our all grain yeah. brew day, only because again, it could be dumb luck, knock on wood, thank you, Lord, mm -hmm. that we have hit our numbers every time, and yeah. uh, or most of the time we hit our numbers, and we've always turned out with exceptional beer, or pardon me, acceptable beer. It's not always exceptional, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's always acceptable. My dad, well, to, to give us uh, a little jab in the gut, maybe, to show our standards are low. Even that Northern English brown ale that has mm -hmm. obviously turned. He was like, he took another sip of it. He goes, I'll just, I'll just drink it. I was like, no, Dad. We're not going to be... <laughs> 
we're, no. We're not going to be that yeah. when I first started brewing. I'm like, I'm not throwing it out. <laughs> Mm, you hold no. your, you pinch your nose, and then you just take the drink. You're like, it's not that bad, guys. Um, <laughs> I told him, like, Dad, we're not going to be those people. Like, I always joke that my standards are low already, but we're not going to be those people. Like, <laughs> we have to be honest with ourselves when beer turns or if beer doesn't turn out okay. And um, I'm happy to say, by following your recipes, by following Joe's recipes, by following Lorena's recipes, um, thank God that I've ended up okay and have solid beer on tap. But, uh, but well, you know what? I, I just thought of this. I've got a good story that goes perfect with this. And it was that last beer that we brewed on Todd's system when we were tweaking the new controller. Now, that was the one that we were off uh, temperature wise. Now, the mash efficiency should have been here. But by the time we brewed it and we finished it, we were way, well, it should have been up here. Yeah. And I was way down here on gravity. In fact, the gravity was so low that I had to boil off over two gallons to hit in our target range. Okay. And then you're thinking, well, James, what does, what the hell does that mean with that question? Well, there's a good example because our brew house efficiency, something caused that to go low, which was the temperature sensors were not calibrated correctly. So we mashed entirely in the beta range. What did that do? Well, what that did was it created a lot of fermentable sugars, I wouldn't say a lot, it, it created all fermentable sugars in the beta range, but not as much as we would have produced in both mm -hmm. at 150 ish, 152 degree between 150 and 152. So if we would have been in our temperature range, our brew house efficiency, our equipment that we used to brew the beer, the beer recipe in, it would have been up there where it needed to be. So two things happen. One, we had two gallons less beer at the end than we than we anticipated. And two, when if you remember, Todd texted us yesterday, what was the gravity on that beer that he kegged? Oh, what, what it was, was at 1006. I was gonna say it's yeah. And it should have been around 1013. So that proves huge how big a deal knowing your brew house efficiency versus mash efficiency. So the mash efficiency should have got it. At, uh, at at the 10, whatever it was on that recipe, but it did because it didn't. I had to boil liquid off to concentrate the sugars more. So we produced less beer. We produced drier beer and it firm, it fermented all the way down to 1006. Impressive. So that's the biggest difference is if, if your brew house efficiency is off, you need to find out why, because your mash efficiency should have been a certain range, but the brew house didn't. Um, that's another way to look at it. And I'm sure somebody will argue with me on that. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I look at and that's what I think about. So our brew, brew house efficiency was off. Uh, and I, I guess you can argue the mash was too, because that's the process in the equipment, but right. that's another rabbit hole. But yeah, it, uh, that's what I love about these questions too, is it's like, uh, sometimes I have to catch myself from like, how much do I have to go down this rabbit trail to uh, <laughs> yeah. explain myself? But no, I think you nailed it. Yeah. And especially that example where, and now that you'll have it calibrated appropriately, I think the brew days are, are, are going to be solid and the yep. new controller is legit, man. That new controller yep. is so cool. I, I'm excited about, uh, it's like, you know, you, you, you did the first controller and I was like, this is as good as it gets. This is amazing. And then you're like, I think we could do better. And then you made another yeah. controller and I was like, oh my gosh, like this the is the only, th we, we changed those. We were using, uh, I think I ordered a cheap PID from Amazon and I started buying stuff from Auburn's. And if you guys are, are, uh, needing a, a place to find that kind of equipment that make a really cool, uh, mash and boil controller, but it's very complicated to program. <laughs> That's the only drawback. Now you can make it. I think I, I wish they just had, you could just turn the knob, push it in, set it and forget it. This thing will do up to nine different mash steps. And I mean, you can do a pause. You can, it, it, it's, it's a pretty fantastic controller, it's but thorough. sometimes, it's a little complicated, but uh, 
But maybe those they make guys, good stuff. I say maybe those guys that want to take it to that level because there are a percentage of people brewing that want that kind of control. They want mm-hmm. that kind of. Uh, I mean, you remember like in the in the day, like when people describe operating systems to people, like, well, you just you get a Mac because it just works and it's just easy. And Windows is a little <laughs> yeah. more complicated and this and this. And Linux is for you dorts that want to have everything your way or whatever. Like, um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, maybe it's that. Maybe people yeah. there are, but it you, can be programmed to make to make to be simple. Um, I haven't used it enough to to give a really thorough evaluation. How about we, we start a new business, a side project, I'll fund it, you do the work, where people, they pay us for you to program it however they want it, and then we, <laughs> yeah. and then we ship it to them. Because that's what I was going to ask you to do if I build out a three vessel system with my pop one yeah. day. I, I say that I'm. We're gonna. I need to figure out the logistics of getting that spite single vessel to us. Uh, yeah. Shipping it is not uh, plausible right now. Uh, well, the price already. Just to ship that yeah. big old thing is not going to be plausible. So I'm going to see if Todd might let me do a day trip up there, uh, swing swing by the barn just to pick it up, keep myself quarantined away from his family and then drive to the office and work the rest of the day and then drive home. Uh, cause I, I'm excited. I still want to make that brute, that video. And I, as far as I know, spite, this isn't from spike, but they haven't told us that there's any delays in their production in regards to like their timeline of releasing it and all that. So as far as I know, it's still coming out sometime this spring. Yeah. I mean, they're working. I got an email from Scott today, so they're in there working right now. Yeah. So hopefully, uh, Oh, like I said, we can get that content. So when it does launch and you want to make that choice, we can give you our full feedback. Because the first brew day, we have our opinions, but it was also that we had some hiccups because the the con- yeah. it wasn't calibrated uh, right when Kenny and I did the auto tune. We did it wrong. Apparently, they have an update on that. Uh, they also, you know, yeah. the, the running recirculation was a little wonky. So all that stuff that was getting hashed. The, like I've said before, and I'll say it forever. What I love about Spike, Ben, Ryan, all Scott, all those guys out there at Spike, they take your feedback and they use it. And they, mm-hmm. they make the appropriate changes. They're really solid guys, really doing really good stuff out there. So uh, I want to get that control or that whole system again just to go. Yeah, let, don't don't double mail the grains. <laughs> you no one can don't blame, do it. No one can blame you, James. You're a, <laughs> no one can blame you. you it, there's being touted like people online are calling it a, an electronic brew in a basket. Well, what do you do in a brew or brew in a bag? But the B is actually basket. We thought it was <laughs> yeah. bag. On a brew in a bag, you double mill. That's what be, that's yeah. what people do, but nobody blames you. But anyways, James, that is it for this week's show, my friend. I do appreciate you taking time out of the busy day to come do it. And um, like I said, ideally, I'd love to come up for a day up there, but we just don't know right now with the shelter in place. Yeah. I can't. I literally can't come up there anyway. So uh, we'll see how this all plays out. We hope you listening are staying safe and healthy yes. and if you need anything we are around i promise you that so feel free to message us or email us with any comments questions or concerns for the show or for whatever so uh james again mr carlson i do appreciate your time and i will you talk to, i'll talk to you soon all right and that will do it for this episode of the homebrew happy hour if you have a question you'd like us to discuss on a future episode you can go to homebrewhappyhour.com and click on the submit a question link at the top of the page or now you can call or text them in by using 325-305-6107 thank you to our show sponsor spike brewing equipment for supporting us and the home brewing community Learn more about their incredible equipment at spikebrewing.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and make the most of your brew day. On behalf of the absent Todd Burns, James Carlson, and the Pearl Media Network, I'm Joshua Steubing. Thank you for listening. This program is made possible by the checkbook of Mr. Todd Burns and by contributions to our newly launched Patreon by viewers like you. Visit patreon.com forward slash homebrew happy hour and join our community. Thank you.